Hello and welcome back to the Babel Chats with Filippo. Um, I sort of uh, this week is going to be about Oviedo again. Uh, they were playing on Friday night, and it'll, I'll probably always feature Oviedo because this is my chance for me to talk talk about them. Uh, we'll also talk about what sort of what happened in Syria, and there's a big game coming up in Syria in about half an hour's time, uh, and also just sort of let you know what's going to be going on going forward with this little show is going to be known as the Babel Chats and it's not always going to be just me standing in my kitchen where I still have no furniture. We have ordered it, I'm sure you're all worried, and it is coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I'm, I'll move locations around the house once the furniture has been dotted down. But yes, as I said, um, Oviedo. <sighs> uh, since I've like started my, um Watching Oviedo, I'm not sure if it's always been the case. Well, I know it's always been the case, actually, apologies, because they've been up and down, but I'm not sure if, if they've gone through this spell where they seem to be kicking on and flying and everything looks so positive, and then next thing they have a slump where they like fall into like sort of a seems like a black hole of like I don't know what's going on, but they played real, they played Tenerife on Friday night at eight o'clock our time over here in, in Ireland and Northern Ireland and the UK, just so I don't offend anyone there. Um, they played them on Friday night, uh, Tenerife were below Oviedo in the league, they were six points below them in the league before the game and Oviedo were sort of in that bit where they were they're sixth in the league or they were sixth in the league and just on the cusp of the playoff spot so obviously if you know it's, it's like the championship but it, it is their championship, it's the second tier down and it's between third and uh, sixth there's four spots to go and play in the playoffs and Oviedo were sixth as at the kickoff. 18 minutes in and Luongo, Samuel Luongo from Tenerife scored an absolute cracking goal. Balls uh, out on the Oviedo, t- towards the Oviedo fullback and it's whipped in. It's not, it's not even, it's sort of just 5-10 yards inside the half. So it's just one of those, it's whipped in with decent pace as well towards the box. It looks sort of innoxious enough. It's one, certainly as a fan, you would be wanting your centre half to come and win. It sits up perfectly for him, but Longo gets in front, he manages to chest it, and as he chests it, he sort of manages to, to bring the ball to his right, and so he can spin around on it, and he just volleys it home. There, it is a, it's, a, it's actually a stunning goal, it was brilliant, but you still sort of have a little bit, as a fan, thinking, could the centre half maybe have gotten in front there and cleared that ball away? He didn't, and there's still a lot to do for Longo, and he smashed it home, it was fair play. He can't really complain with the finish, and there's nothing the goalkeeper could have done there. Second goal goes to Tenerife and they go 2-0 up after 37 minutes. It's Mula who gets his first goal of the night. Again, it's it comes out of nothing really. It, the ball is just sitting in front of the two centre-halves. Actually, Oviedo had gone 3-4-2-1 uh, on Friday night and, and it's, front, it's in front of the centre-half. Uh, I'm not sure which one it was. But he makes sort of a meal of it trying to clear it. He sort of stumbles and slips and the ball f- sets up perfectly for Mula. Who <clears throat> it's a weird one, like he doesn't he doesn't absolutely thump the ball, he sort of cuts through the ball, but he hits it with enough pace that it just it's always gonna rise away from the goalkeeper's fingertips and it just sort of glides perfectly into the top corner. It was a st- another stolen goal from Tenerife, but it just sort of summed up how Oviedo's half had gone. There was not there was, apart from a free kick that I think uh, Christian had hit, Christian Fernandez had hit, there was nothing really <clears throat> Going for Oviedo, the Tache was just running about up front on his own. He wasn't getting any service. He wasn't our supply, and he was trying to live off scraps. And they were real, <laughs> they were horrific scraps uh, on Friday night. There was literally nothing going for him in that first half, and it didn't look too great. So half time approaches, he's sort of hoping in a little spell that maybe they'll come out and get something in the second half. They did come out and manage to start a mount a bit of an attack on Tenerife. Um, the ball cleared off the line. I think it's uh, Forlin who has a, a relatively easy shot that he puts towards goal. It's like, um, if you remember Merseyside Derby a couple of years ago, where Phil Neville gets sent off, <clears throat> where he handles it. I think it's Lucas is about to score the winner. I think that was Lucas's first derby as well. Uh, and uh, Phil Neville's on the line, but he he handles the ball and gets it, keeps it out of the goal. The defender this time heads it away. He stands right in front of it, just both clears it and the goalkeeper was beaten. Um, but four or five minutes later though, Oviedo did get their goal. It's a similar sort of area as to where Luongo scored his. The ball's whipped in from that sort of, just inside the half. 
um, free kick it sort of whipped in and four lane manages to get it sent home a lovely cushion tater 2-1 you see, and Alviedo at this point had really started to come into the game a bit more um, they got a couple of good sort of possessions and they were starting to come forward and Saul and all had been in the or not Saul Aaron had been in the game Aaron Niguez had been in the game and um, Forlan was starting to stamp his authority and you're thinking okay maybe the next goal is going to be Alviedo's but they were still they'd all gone gung-ho at this point everybody had gone f- forward and it was the 72nd minute at this point and everyone had broke forward like more or less had left the hole back wide open to the goalkeeper on his own and of course Tenerife won the ball back and broke pretty quickly and as it's fizzed across the box it's Mula who lobs it over the goalkeeper and makes it 3-1 and saves the game there's no real way back for Oviedo I was kind of a little bit peeved off um, as an Oviedo fan because I understand that you need to go for an equaliser and you need to go forward but there was plenty of time left where maybe a little bit of game management should have come in there where they maybe could have just settled themselves for a couple of minutes and not gone the whole team far and forward it was just a bit bit manic and you're always going to leave yourself open to that there and they were rightly punished uh, in the end there's nothing really else was created the rest of the half and it was a bit of a disappointing night for Oviedo to go down 3-1 Certainly the way the, the playoffs are going and it's crunch time now and they really need to start picking up wins because they've dropped the 7th now in the league. Um, I just had it wrote down here. Yeah, they've dropped the 7th in the league. They're on 46 points. 4th um, is 59 points and that is Sporting now. Oof, imagine that as a playoff game over two legs. And right down in Tenerife are 12th but they're on 43 points. So it's the 6 points between 12th and uh, Fourth and twelfth, which is chaos. So any number of those teams could end up in the playoffs, but Oviedo need they need to make sure it's the same for everyone, for all us Oviedo fans and ones that aren't Oviedo fans, you should get involved and, and enjoy it. It's a good laugh. I sort of wanted to talk about that as to what it is like supporting Oviedo. Uh, it, it's and it's sort of like therapeutic for me, even though at the minute we're not doing too well. I, everybody knows that would watch the show or whatever or knows me that. I've been a Liverpool fan all my life and will always be a Liverpool fan but having these shares in Oviedo and then sort of having another team that it, I can come away from the chaos and the nonsense that happens when you support Liverpool in the Premier League and how some of your mates are fans of United, Everton, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs, whoever and you've always a chance saying that they can beat you and then they have for a weekend, a week they have bragging rights whereas if you go over and I'm supporting Oviedo I don't know any sporting fans, I don't know any Huesca fans, I don't know any Vallecano fans. So if we do get beat, or I don't know any Tenerife fans, if we do get beat, I can be like, hmm, I can settle myself and I'm not getting tortured. Or well, Tortured is probably the wrong word because I love all that. That's part of being a fan and it's brilliant when one of your mates gets one up on you and about two months later you're able to fire back on them if your team beats them. But I, I I loving this bit of being an Oviedo fan where I can I can watch it on my own and I can obviously have chat to some of you which are brilliant on Twitter um, and thanks for always getting involved and we can talk about Oviedo away from all the chaos that happens when you support a team in the Premier League but hopefully um, on Sunday coming up we play Granada in a week's time that's at five o'clock which will be good for me because I can come on straight away after I do my video here hopefully. Oviedo can pick up three points. Granada's going to be tough because they're right in the playoff mix as well. In fact, I think they're maybe third. Um, so, fingers crossed. One good thing, though, is for next week is that Sporting go to Huesca, who are running away with the league. And hopefully, Sporting will drop points and then Oviedo can uh, join level with them. That'd be some crack if they either drew each other in the playoffs or if one of them knocked the other one out of the playoffs for this season. That would be absolutely mental. Just to finish off on Spanish football, it's I'm not sure if any of you have heard of the Copa 90 uh, YouTube page. It's I'm absolutely addicted to it now, and I know you probably shouldn't promote other pages on your YouTube page, but we did anyway at the Sports Bible because we're all dead on. They're doing a Derby Days thing, and they've been doing it for a while, but they're, they're doing a sort of a Spanish one at the minute, and I just caught up with uh, today's one that was released. They're releasing one every Sunday for a couple of weeks, and it was in Mallorca. And I'm not going to say too much about it, but go and check it out. It, I didn't even know there was a derby existed in Mallorca. I just thought that was Mallorca was the only team, but there's two teams and Mallorca have fallen way down there. They're in uh, the third tier in Spanish football, so it'd be like League One in um, in England, and it's not looking great for them down there. But the derby is class. Oh, um, 
Uh, this is actually looking great for them, sorry, because they're coming. I think they're going to come back up. But it's not great for them that they're down there now. But the the derby is class, and um, yeah, check it out. That derby day is on Cup of Ninety. They do some really good stuff. And um, so up the lads over there. As I did say, Serie A. There's been a couple of big games in that at the weekend. Um, a couple of big results. Juventus went and beat Udinese. Probably was everyone would think that was going to happen anyway, but. Paulo de Bala scored twice. <laughs> he just seems to, since he's come back from his injury, he really does seem to have picked the ring up. And I sort of posed the question on the front three show the other night uh, who would you rather have, Griezmann or de Bala? And it's de Bala for me. I just think he's, he can, as a number 10, he, he really epitomises what a number 10 should be. He scores goals, he creates goals, he's the pivot and the focal point of a team. I, I would have him any day of the week over Griezmann. Griezmann's a brilliant player, a world class player, but I think the ball is just that little bit level above him. Udine, or Juventus won 2 0, which puts them two points ahead of Napoli. And after Napoli's defeat last week, 4 2 to Roma, they're playing Inter Milan tonight, um, which I said earlier, it's at uh, quarter to eight over here in the UK, Ireland, Northern Ireland. And I'm going to try and ca- catch it because I think it'll be a brilliant game. Inter v Napoli. Napoli need to win it. Because Juventus have a game in hand, so if Napoli lose it, you know Juventus are going to win their game in hand, and that'll be five points. Eek. Probably be too much for Napoli to try and catch it. Juventus are they're the old lady, and you've seen them the other night against uh, Tottenham. When the chips are down, they'll muck in, they'll know how to get over the line. <clears throat> you do not want to be giving them a five point gap in Serie A. So check that out if you can, and if you're watching this afterwards, go back and check the highlights out if you didn't. Um, as I did say, the Babble Chat is going to not always just be myself. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be joined with some guests, um, some sports people, male and female, who uh, are local or they represent either Northern Ireland or Ireland and different sporting activities. So that is what we've got lined up. It's probably not going to start for a couple of weeks till I get myself sorted, but I'm very excited about it. And it's going to be me um, chatting to some of these people and just sort of finding out like, how they got to where they are, and um, what it's like being an athlete. Like these, are, these aren't going to be superstar athletes. Like I'm not even for, like our Premier League footballers that we have here, or like Carl Frampton and, and those guys. Because the, you know I'm not going to aim for them just yet. I would rather as well talk to the ones that you don't hear from and give them a platform here that we can hear from them. People that are going to the Commonwealth Games, yeah, in like like so weightlifting and athletics, and um, some of our hockey players, some of our lesser known um, golf stars, road racers, because I'm massively in my motorbike road racing, I want to get some of them on, so yeah, that's hopefully we've got some of them lined up, some of our Gaelic players, some of our soccer players, if anybody knows of anyone that would like to come on and chat to me, or chat to the lads in Sports Babble, and, and, and you think, of, or even anyone you think that you don't know, but you think they'd actually be good to go on that, give us a shout here on our YouTube page, or our social media sites on the Sports Babble, uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and let us know and we'll go and see if they'll come on. So, yeah, thanks for watching again this week. Thanks for all your comments last week. Uh, even the ones that were sort of booed me and asked me to get Jake on. Jake has his own show called Just Jake and he's coming, don't worry, he's coming back on later on, on this week. He's been quite busy. Um, but the Prince of Rome will be back to tell you all about what's been going on in the world of football. Um, I'm, I am a massive fan as all of you are of Jake anyway so I can't wait for that but yes uh, thanks for all the comments all the likes all the shares keep checking our Facebook page because our competition is coming to an end we need to get up to 500 uh, followers uh, on our Facebook and you could win a Premier League top of your choice so if you haven't already subscribed to us there and liked and shared or whatever the competition I always forget um, go over and do it now and check us out on Facebook thanks for watching see you again next week Good luck.